Welcome at IEMO. My name is Professor Paolo Lanzetta and I'm the founder and scientific director of this ambulatory surgery center. Today we will together follow the full journey of a patient with retinal angiomatous proliferation or RAP. You know that this is a devastating disease uh, leading to uh, blindness in the majority of cases without treatment. Luckily enough we have effective treatments which can dramatically change the course of the disease. A ambulatory surgery center or ASC is a modern healthcare facility which offers patients an optimized pathway for the diagnosis and therapy of medical conditions. An ASC is an ideal setting for patients with ophthalmic conditions due to the presence of highly skilled staff cutting-edge technology and tailored diagnostic and therapeutic plans in a comfortable, safe and convenient environment. It has been shown that outpatient surgery carried out in an ASC is superior to those carried out in a hospital facility when criteria such as safety, patient focus, timeliness, efficiency and equitability were assessed. Open in 2012, IEMO was one of the first ophthalmic surgery centers in the northeast of Italy and it is known for its commitment to excellence and high quality care. Today, we will follow the journey of a patient affected by retinal angiomatous proliferation or RAP. RAP is a subtype of new vascular macular degeneration. The patient is now complaining of decrease and distorted vision in her left eye for a few weeks. Our patient is 67 years old and she takes medication for arterial hypertension. Her past ophthalmic history is unremarkable. She now remembers that her sister is affected by age-related macro degeneration. RAP represents an estimated 10 to 12% of newly diagnosed new vascular AMD lesions. The most significant risk factors of RAP are age, female gender, and smoking. In general, risk factors for developing RAP are comparable to other choroidal new vascularization or CNV subgroups, but genetics variants in the complement factor H gene seem to play an inferior role. RAP is also known as type 3 CNV. Type 1 is the commonly defined occult choroidal new vascularization and it is characterized by new vascularization proliferating under the retinal pigment epithelium. Type 2 CNV is also known as classic choroidal new vascularization. In this condition, new vessels penetrate the retinal pigment epithelium layer and proliferate beneath the neurosensory retina. Type 3 CNV is associated with proliferation of new vessels within the retina itself. This proliferation occurs in conjunction with a compensatory telangiectatic response, a perfusing arterial and draining venule with the formation of a retinal choroidal anastomosis. Hi, I'm Valentina Sarao and now I'm going to take you through the initial visual test. The presence or development of RAP can cause devastating visual consequences, severely damaging central visual acuity, with the potential to cause irreversible relative or absolute central scotoma. Early recognition is therefore paramount to allow aggressive therapy to be initiated. Although visual acuity measurement is one of the most important parameters to be measured when evaluating a patient with a macular disorder, the intravitreal experts group has found that this may vary from one physician to another. For this reason, a ETDRS or ETDRS-like test is recommended, especially in patients with suspected macular conditions, and therefore lower visual acuities as they reliably measure how visual acuity changes during the course of treatment and follow up once a treatment plan is agreed. 
This is also important to reduce the variance in measurements between physicians so that visual changes which may indicate issues at an anatomical level can clearly be monitored. Our patient has a visual acuity of 83 letters in her right eye, which corresponds to 2025, and 65 letters in her left eye, which corresponds to 2050. Patients affected by RAP typically present with a visual acuity that ranges from 2050 to 2100. The intraocular pressure measured with Goldman Aplanation Tonometry is a 16 in the right eye and 17 in the left eye. After anterior segment evaluation, the patient is dilated. Following initial test, the ocular fundus is examined. At YEMO, we have recently been using ADON, which is a true color scanning of thalmoscope that uses confocal imaging and white light illumination to produce high definition images with high fidelity to real retinal colors, providing the most accurate anatomy and all the detailed information a physician needs for an accurate diagnosis and precise monitoring of the retinal diseases. This device is also able to provide red-free and autofluorescence images. It is easy to use and automatically aligns to the patient's pupil, focuses on the retina and captures images in less than one second. In her left eye, our patient shows the classic signs of RAP. We can see a focal intraretinal hemorrhage a right-angle retinal vessel extending from the inner retina towards the RPE. An RPE elevation surrounded by hard exudates. In the fellow eye, we can detect the presence of multiple large confluent drusen with subtle pigmentary changes. It is important to note that in a large proportion of cases, RAP develops also in the fellow eye, especially in cases with large soft drusen or reticular pseudodrusen. Studies suggest that 40 to 60% of patients develop bilateral RAP within two years after the first diagnosis and 100% develop RAP in the fellow eye by three years. Hello, my name is Daniele Veritti and now I'm going to take some OCT imaging. The highly detailed information provided by SwebSource Optical Coherence Tomography is extremely useful for the identification of retinal angiomatous proliferation and its associated manifestations. This is because Swept Source OCT allows detailed imaging also in the RPE choriocopillaris layers. OCT is mandatory for the diagnosis and monitoring of retinal angiomatous proliferation. Moreover, this device allows us to obtain OCT angiographic images. OCT angiography is a novel, non-invasive technique that provides information regarding blood flow using blood cells movements, OCT technology and specific algorithms. This is the OCT of the left eye of our patient. We can easily detect the presence of intraretinal fluid and RPE detachment, which is partially filled with intermediately reflective material. Moreover, within the neurosensory retina, we can appreciate the presence of hyperreflective material that corresponds to hard exudates. If uh, we move the scan a little bit, uh, we can note an RPE interruption along the RPE detachment with an overlying hyperreflective oval area. This finding is extremely important because it is a very typical feature of RAP. In the right eye, we can see the presence of discrete collections of hyperreflective material above the RPE consistent with Drusen. OCT angiography provides information on both 
retinal and choroidal blood flow and can determine the presence of abnormal neovascularization. It can help to answer questions around the specific pathophysiology of the disorder, whilst also providing opportunities, once diagnosed, to monitor non-invasively the disease progression. Viewing these OCT angiography results, we can see that a type 3 neovascularization is visible, shown through this small tuft of intraretinal vessels. The flow density map reveals the presence of blood flow over the RPE interruption. The pathophysiology of RAP, as proposed by Yenuzzi, is characterized by a three-stage evolution. In stage 1, there is an initial intraretinal neovascularization. In stage 2, the intraretinal neovascularization extends into the subretinal space, forming subretinal neovascularization and retinal-retinal anastomosis. In stage 3, the neovascular process extends posteriorly, interrupting the RPE layer and forming a serous RPE detachment, achieving a retinal choroidal anastomosis with an underlying CNV. However, the physiopathologic process is still controversial. Some authors, in fact, suggest that CNV precedes the development of an anastomosing retinal vessel to this lesion. Fluorescent angiography and Indocian in green angiography are both invasive tests, each requiring the administering of dye intravenously. Both tests are considered to be traditional methods of angiography and show the dynamic visualization of blood flow. Our patient manifested a serious allergic reaction to different agents, so we decided to avoid this exam in consideration of the pathognomonic images obtained both with conventional OCT and OCT angiography. However, we are going to illustrate the typical angiographic signs of RAP in the frames obtained from another patient. Fluorescent angiography in RAP shows a small hyperfluorescence in early frames with late diffuse leakage and pooling of the dye in cystic spaces. ICG is used to better evaluate choroidal vascularization. In RAP lesions, ICG angiography shows a shunting of blood flow in the neovascular net. Often it is possible to identify the feeding arteriole. In ICGA late frames, the RAP lesion is also evident as a distinct point of hyperfluorescence. Today, we have seen a patient with a RAP lesion. The visual acuity was 20-25 in the right eye and 20-50 in the left eye. Further assessment included OCT and OCT angiography, where our patient has shown the presence of intraretinal cysts RP detachment with a retinal choroidal anastomosis. Following the classification system proposed by Lauren Yanuzzi, we are able to diagnose RAP stage 3 in the left eye. Based on the evidence of a RAP lesion associated to an RP detachment, we decided that intravitreal administration of anti-VGF should be given to the patient. It is extremely important to inform the patient about the aggressive nature and rapid evolution of a RAP lesion and to pay great attention to the fellow eye because an early diagnosis of RAP is of great importance to allow successful treatment and prevent severe visual loss. The natural history of RAP is poor. It has been reported that patients can lose more than five lines in two years if left untreated. Over the years, different therapeutic approaches have been attempted, laser photocoagulation, photodynamic therapy alone or in conjunction with intravitreal drugs. The introduction of anti-VGF therapy has markedly changed the functional prognosis of RAP lesions. Recent studies demonstrated that type 3 neovascularization, especially if diagnosed at an early stage, has a brief response to anti-VGF therapy with prone resolution of intraretinal fluid, remarkable regression of RP detachment, 
and good visual prognosis. Several studies are present in literature reporting the results of anti-VEGF agents for the treatment of RAP. Most reports show an improvement of visual acuity of one to two lines after one year of therapy. A subgroup analysis of the CAT study showed that 126 patients with RAP were treated with bevacizumab or ranibizumab. After the first year of therapy, an improvement of 10.6 and 7.8 letters was reported after one and two years respectively. After one year, RAP lesions showed less fluid, less leakage on fluorescent geography, more reduction in foveal thickness, more geographic atrophy development when compared to other CNV subtypes. The efficacy of aflibercept in RAP lesions has recently been reported, showing a mean visual acuity gain of two ETDRS lines after one year of follow-up and eight aflibercept injections on average. Our patient receives two milligram of aflibercept intravitreally every four weeks for a total of three injections during the loading phase. Afterwards, the patient receives eight weekly treatments. After 12 months follow-up, our patient has received eight injections of aflibercept. Her visual acuity has increased by five letters, correlating with a decrease in central retinal thickness from 444 microns at the start of treatment to 195 microns at the end of follow-up. OCT imaging shows that the retina no longer has signs of intraretinal fluid and RP detachment has flattened. OCT angiography highlights an impressive reduction of blood flow in correspondence of the choroidal neovascular network and the anastomosis. The patient will now continue with monitoring and treatment on a treat and extend regimen with intravitreal aflibercept.